Hi guys, it's Katie here again from Bella Creativa and I have a new project that I'd like to share with you. Um, this I call La Petite, it's an organiser. So the reason why I call it La Petite is because we have previously done an organiser before which is called Le Grand and it is quite a bit bigger than the La Petite. So um, if this one's big um, and grand then this one's small and petite. So um, I thought I would show you these guys now because I think they make great um, gifts, maybe Christmas gifts and um, they're pretty quick to put together and we will do a tutorial after this so that you will see how I put this little guy here together. Uh, let, but let me just start by giving you a little look through it. So it's got the elastic closure and I have put um, a ribbon on the side but you could just as easily use um, elastic for that or nothing at all, it's up to you. I've put this little hangy uh, charm here on, on here, um, you know you could do anything that you liked. Uh, so it's just got a little spine like so with uh, eyelets in there. You don't need to put the eyelets in if you don't want to. Um, it, you know it's up to you <laughs> so we just open her up like this and then open up the inside cover it's got a tiny little pocket down here so um, I have designed the pockets to be able to take um, cards this size so this is the size of a uh, store card or a credit card um, rewards card this is the sort of standard size okay so this will fit in here like so quite nicely and so that was sort of the basis of why I made it this size because I thought it would be small enough to fit in your purse or handbag if you wanted to um, and it's just you know it's small and compact um, so then we have a little pocket here and inside the little pocket is an envelope um, so you can slide some things in the envelope if you would like to and or you can just put things directly into the pocket but there's another little storage spot here we have a slot pocket so you can put some cards in here or whatever it is that you um, might like and then on the next page we have a belly band and under this belly band I have put uh, or made this little um, file folder so here's another place that we can store things like receipts or lists or anything like that we can just pop it in there keep it a little bit separate from everything else then in the center here is a removable notebook so um, the um, printable templates or the SVG files themselves I should tell you about that in a minute <laughs> Um, you can um, contain how to make this little booklet and then we made this little booklet during the tutorial so it's replaceable you know so once you filled that up um, you can put another one in here and still be able to use the rest of this so I thought that was kind of handy so then after this little notebook we have three little pockets on this page and they again take um, are perfect for taking store cards gift cards, business cards, reward cards can all go in each of these pockets so um, that's handy I don't know about you but I have so many re reward cards okay so that's that page and then on the back I'll just put a little um, corner pocket here and another little envelope like so and then on the back cover is an accordion envelope um, I had I did put a magnet on here but my magnets didn't work so I've put a little velcro here uh, which I'll just open up and here's a little spot here where you can stuff it full of receipts I have so many receipts floating around in my handbag so <laughs> you can put them in there and then there's also a little hidey hole in the back here where you can put things in as well so that is La Petite we made this one or I made this one during the tutorial and in this one I cut all my pieces out of cardstock and then I matted everything with scrapbook paper. Um, I actually used um, a set of um, uh, digital printable scrapbook papers 
from my Etsy store. So if you wanted to use this one, you could go to my Etsy store and have checked that one out. I'll put the link in the description box to my store. Um, so that's this little guy here. And then I just wanted to quickly show you this one here. It's exactly the same. It took me even less time to make than this one because um, I didn't matter. I printed my pre um, digital scrapbook paper directly onto white cardstock. And so as you can see, I didn't need to do any matting. So when you open this one up and um, there are a couple, there's a blank page here. But so in this instance, I've put my um, slot pocket on the inside cover. And I was going to put one of my envelopes on here, but I just didn't get around to it. But you can see I've just printed directly onto my cardstock, so it makes it even quicker. And the same with the pockets. I've just printed my po uh, printed or cut my pockets straight out of um, cardstock that I've printed on. So you can see that there. And the same all the way through with my little booklet. And it's my belly band. And then um, on this one, I've used the, um, the the front pocket for this one is actually the, a box at the back of this one, and it's a flip. And on this one, I've put three of those tiny little pockets instead of just the one. So you, there's opportunities for you to make this any way that you like, and to embellish it any way you like. And you can obviously. Um, go this way and make it with matting or you can go this way and um, save yourself the time of matting it and still make a cute little organizer. So I just wanted to tell you about the files themselves because during the tutorial I referred to SVG files and then I thought you know this is actually a really great printable template um, project as well so I have since Put together some printable templates so I want to show you both of them um, you can just you know get an idea uh, so these are the three files that you would get uh, as the SVG files and you also get a PDF guide and then if you were to get the printable templates the printable templates themselves print out like this now I've made them half the size so I could get them in a little booklet just so I could show you but they look like this and I will also um, nip over to the computer and show you these as well. So, which is what I'll do now. I'll head over to my computer and we'll have a look at the files and also the printable down, uh, printable templates. And then we will come back and um, I will put the tutorial for how to, I made this on the end of this video so that you can uh, do it all together. So the paper, um, digital scrapbook paper that I use to make this is available in my Etsy store. The SVG files and the printable templates for the La Petite are also available in my Etsy store and the link is down below. Otherwise, um, let's go over to the computer. All right. Okay, so I'm here at my computer and I thought I would um, give you a quick look at the um, zip files that you will receive uh, if you download them from my Etsy store. So the, I have two zip files here. You'll only receive the one for either the SVG files or for the printable templates. But I thought I'd give you a quick look at both of them and then you can move on to the tutorial. I'll try and remember to put a timestamp underneath so once you've seen the bit that you need to see you can move on. But let's have a quick look at the printable templates first. So I'll just double click on this zip folder and then I need to click on extract all and say extract and it will have opened that up so if I go back up a level you'll see that I now have this file here which is the unzipped printable template so let's just double click on that and you can see that there are three PDFs in here one is the guide and then there is the A4 printable template and, and then there is one for letter size paper for printable templates so let's have a quick look at the guide first. So I'll just double click on that. So you might like to print this out or at least just have it handy on your computer to refer to. So this is a, a guide. Um, I just give you a little bit of information here about you, how to use the printable templates, um, a little bit about 
the um, scoring lines and then there is a link to this video so you can come and have a look at the tutorial. And then on the last two pages are some screenshots um, of each of the printable template pages. There are eight pages in all. The first four pages are the pieces that I have cut out of cardstock and the next four, um, four pages are the mats for that. So this is just a handy reference guide that you might like to print out. So let's just close that one and then let's go and have a look at the Let's have a look at the A4 ones. Now the A4 and the letter size are no different except for the page size that they come on. So this is what the printable templates themselves look like. The dotted lines are your scoring and folding lines and then you just cut out around the solid lines. So you can print this directly onto scrapbook paper, print um, digital printable paper, um, uh, straight onto cardstock or you could cut this out and use it as a traceable template. It, it, the choices are yours. So this is what um, the printable templates look like. Okay, so we'll move on now to have a look at the file for the SVG files. So the SVG files are for uploading to your electronic cutting machine. I have a Cricut, so that's the only thing that I can show you how to upload them on. But if you're pretty savvy with your electronic cutting machine and the software, you shouldn't have any problems. You just need to know how to change the um, score lines from cut lines to score lines, and which is what I'm going to show now in Cricut Design Space. Um, but I'm sure it's not dissimilar to some other type of software for electronic cutting machines. Okay, so let's double click on this file here and extract the contents of that one. You can see there are three SVG files and then a PDF. So let's extract those. Click extract. And then I just need to go back up the ways. And now I have one here for SVG files. So if I double click on that, I can see those four file um, folders, documents even here. Let's have a quick look at this guide. So I'll just double click on that. So this guide doesn't look much different, but you can see here it says SVG files instead of printable templates. And then there's a little bit more information here about changing the score lines to, or the cut lines to score lines. And there is a link to this video now. So you can come and have a look at this again if you need to. A little bit of a word there about sizing and rotating the objects on your mat. And there are three SVG files that you will receive. And then I have also included a screenshot of those three files there. And I've put the alphanumeric numbers on there so you can easily refer to them. Okay, so that is the um, guides. Now let's go and have a look at this. These. We need to upload these three files here, these SVG documents, to our electronic cutting machine, in this instance Cricut. So I'm just going to go over to Cricut Design Space, and click on Upload, and then Upload Image, and then Browse. And then we are going to back, go back to my Downloads folder. I'm going to go back to my SVG file folder, open that up, and I'm going to select A. Double click on that. My file looks like this. It has a name, cover and envelope, and I'll go down the bottom and click save. I'm going to do that for all three. So browse, B, double click. If I'm happy with that, click save, and then upload image, browse, C, open or double click, whichever. Happy with that, click save. So now I'm going to select these three files, one, two, three, and click insert images onto a blank canvas. And they all um, import and dump themselves on top of each other. First thing I'm going to do is reduce the size of my canvas a little bit so I can spread everything out. And then oh, we're thinking, I'm just going to move these things around a little bit. So this is my A file. This is my B file and this is my C file. So what we need to do is um, change our cut lines, um, this, what are meant to be score lines to score lines because right now 
Cricut only sees them as cut lines. So the first thing we need to do is ungroup this file. Then click on the blue piece up here because that's what we need to um, change the lines to. And you'll see over in our layers panel that it has highlighted that piece. I'm going to click on the, this bit here that says cut lines. Go up to the left hand side up the top where it says line type. Click on the drop down menu and change it from cut to score. Now we can see that those lines have changed to dash lines, which means they're score lines, so that's great. Then I need to go back over to my layers panel, click on that whole thing where that little arrow is, that's the whole piece there then, all together, and click attach. And that's really important because we need to attach those score lines to that piece, otherwise it doesn't recognise them as belonging to that piece. Now we've lost our mats, our mats are actually underneath, so I'm going to right click and say send back and now I can see all my mats as well and I just like to um, select the whole lot, the mats and the piece and click group and it just keeps everything together and neat and then I usually just collapse my little group so that it doesn't look too messy over in my layers panel. I need to do the same for this piece here, which is the envelope. So I'm clicking on the blue section. I'm going to go over here and click cut and uh, the cut lines and click the line type and change it to score. Click over on the little arrow to get those um, pieces together and click attach. I'm going to right click and say send back. Then I'll click off my piece and then select the whole little group and group it together. Okay, so then that's those two pieces done. Now we need to ungroup this second file, my B file. So I'm going to click ungroup. So this piece here um, has got some score lines on it. So I need to find that blue piece. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, and then I have some cut lines here. I click on those cut lines, change the line type to score and click attach. Oops, attach. And then I'll say send back and I'll just put my little map back in place and then I'll select all of those pieces and click group and then I'll just collapse my group. Now there is no lines on this little guy here so he's fine just as he is. This one here has no um, score lines but what I'm going to do is select both the mat and the blue um, piece underneath. You can see over here there's two pieces there. I'm just going to group those together because it just makes it neater. And then I need to do the same with this piece here. There's some score lines under here. I just need to find them. So I click on that blue piece and click on the cut line and change them to score. Click on the whole thing, click attach. So send to back. Um, bring my map back up and group all of that together. Collapse my group. I need to do the same in this file, so the first thing I need to do is ungroup. And then I'm going to click on this one here. This is our accordion envelope. I'm going to change those cut lines to score lines. Click on the whole piece, click attach. Right click, send to back. I'm going to select the mats and my piece and click group. And then I'm just going to collapse my group. I'll do the same for this little guy here. I might have to move this out of the way. This little tiny pocket here, I'm going to change those cut lines to score lines. Click attach, send it back, click off it, select both pieces, click group and then collapse it. This here, is, we don't need to do anything to it, but I am going to group those two pieces together just to keep it nice and neat. This is a belly band, it's got some score lines on it, so I'm going to click on the cut lines, I'm going to change them to score lines, click the whole thing, click attach, click on it, say centre back, highlight both pieces and click group. And do the same with my little corner pocket down here, change those cut lines to score lines. I feel like I'm talking really quickly. I think I am. I've had a bit of coffee today. <laughs> and uh, select them all, click group, uh, collapse my group. I didn't do that with that one. And then this last little pocket here, change those cut lines to score lines. Select the whole piece, click attach, say send it to back. Click off, highlight both those places, pieces, click group and collapse. 
So now everything is done. That's it. So now if I save this as a project, I'll say save, save. Okay, and I'm going to call it a La Petite Organizer and click save. I don't ever have to do that again. Now it's all done. So um, I guess the only other thing I could mention is when I cut everything out, I work out how many of each piece I might like, or if I can, if I can think ahead that much. Uh, I usually cut out my cardstock pieces first, so I'll just um, hide, click on my group and then I'll just drop down and I'll, I'll hide um, all of my matte pieces because I don't want to cut those out yet. Um, and so I'll do that for all the pieces I want to cut out of cardstock and then I'll say make it and then usually I go back afterwards and work out which mats I want to cut and then I just do the opposite so I will make sure that all of my mats are um, uh, viewable and then I will hide the blue piece underneath and then I'll cut my mats out like that. That's just how I do it and it's completely up to you what your preference is but that's how I do it and so now I will cut out all my pieces and we will go and put our little la petite together so I'll see you again in a minute okay so I have cut out all my bits and pieces and um, I have printed this page out which is the last page of the PDF that you get just so I can show you which um, pieces I have cut out and I've given everything an alphanumeric um, label or number, whatever it is, um, so I can sort of tell you which ones you need. And everything that I'm using today, all the pieces that I'm using today, I have made a list and I'll put that list in the description box below so that um, you don't have to write it down or remember it. Okay, so let's start with the cover. I have cut out one of these A1 covers out of cardstock. That's this guy here. So that's this one here, A1. And I have cut out two of the um, these pieces here and two of those here. Um, I've cut out one, um, they're, they're the mats. So some mats for the front and some mats for the inside. I've cut out one of the spine mats and that's for the outside because the inside we won't see. And I have cut out one of these mats here because I'm going to use this as a um, pocket rather than as a flip. Okay, so I've got that one here and all my little mats for that are here already cut out. So my Cricut has cut it out for me. All I've done is um, burnished the score lines and then done a little inking so it the cover looks like this um, this can either be a flip or um, a pocket it could either be a pocket on the back if we did like so and then this is our front cover or what I'm going to do today is turn it around the other way and have this pocket on the inside cover okay um, let me give you an example. This one here that I've done, um, I have put the pocket on the back and I've um, cut the top and bottom tabs off and that, then it's a flip, okay? So you've got, you can do it either way. So we need some glue. I am using my new glue bottle um, and it's working out really well and I'm also using this new glue. So I'm in Australia and I'm using this glue called Boil here mm. boil craft glue and it's from Bunnings and this was recommended to me by one of the ladies in my um, Facebook group if you're interested it's called Bella Creativa Divas you're welcome to join us and these little um, bottles are from office works and they were also recommended me to me by one of the ladies in the Facebook group and I'm loving it so anyway I've just folded these little tabs in and oh, I should probably map that bit first shouldn't I let's just do that okay this is the front cover before I pop that down let me stick a mat in here so then I don't have to worry about that so that mat's going to go right there like that so let's put a bit of glue on here I've even been using this glue for matting which is pretty cool saves me remembering which bottle to use 
and it comes out so fine. I tell you what though, you do not have a lot of time to think about it. <laughs> There's not a lot of wiggle room. Okay, so that I'm just going to put my mat down on here. Line it up. And there we go, that's good, I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to um, turn this little guy in here. So I'm going to put some glue on these tabs. This one and this one. Okay, and then I'm just going to fold that in and press it down. Try and make sure it's lined up. Might get my bone folder and give it a bit of a run over. Uh, let's make sure that's lined up. And this one. Like so. So that's my front cover and I've got my little pocket there already. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, I might as well put my mat on the back as well, I think. I don't think there's anything stopping me. And the only thing is... Do I want to give it rounded corners? I feel like I might want to do that. So let's get out my corner rounder and put some little rounded corners around here. Mm. This is obviously optional. You don't have to do that. So then I'll put a little bit of Distress Ink. I'm using a Gathered Twigs. I find that I need something a little bit darker on the craft cardstock than the vintage photo, so I'll just do that around the edges. And then pop that to the side. Then let's round the edges on here, around the corners I should say, on that one. And put a little so then we can pop this one straight on here. This is such a nice, easy little project and I think something quite useful. So, Alright, so I'm showing you today how to make this one by matting it. You don't have to do it like that. You could use double-sided um, scrapbook paper and then um, for the pieces and then uh, cut out the um, cardstock pieces with that and then you wouldn't have to mat it at all. Um, this one here is pretty much what I did with this one. Um, I've been buying white um, cardstock that will go in my printer and just printing straight onto the white cardstock. So none of this is actually matted. I've just cut this straight out of my um, cardstock that I've printed. The same with the covers um, and all of the pieces here. But I thought I'd show you how to make it with the mats and then it's up to you. Um, this was super quick to make because I didn't have to do any matting whatsoever. Um, but it's up to you. Because you might want to use cardstock which is single sided which means then you'd, sorry, um, you might want to use scrapbook paper which is single sided and then you wouldn't be able to um, you, you know you'd have to mat it so blur having what trouble troubles with my words today it's been a little while since I've done a video forget how to do it right I just missed that a little bit there okay so then we need to put in our middle page uh, well hang on let's just put this mat on here and call it done shall we so um, I'm gonna put this mat here I think like that or like that might do it like that. So we need to put some little corners on here. A little bit of, and then a bit of glue. Oh, I should have mentioned that I'm using um, a digital paper pack. This is actually one of my own. It's in my Etsy store. It's called Shabby Roses or something like that. And that's what I'm using today. You can use anything you like. Felt like going a little, little vintagey. Okay, might need to put a bit of glue under there. All right, so that's that pocket done. Perfect. Now we're going to put in this middle um, um, page. So we need one of the B1 pieces, which is this guy here. And I have the mats for that one too. 
cut out already so let's put that to the side and all I'm going to do is put a run a, a line of glue down this spine and then line it up in the middle so let's do that Okay, so then I might have to, I'm just trying to line it up roughly in the middle and hope that I've got a little bit of time to wiggle it around. Because when I close it up, I don't want that middle section. Oh, I think I've done a pretty good job. Okay, awesome. Stick it down. Give it a bit of a burnish, make sure that's stuck down. And the same on this side. So we've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap here. That's that's fine. We should have one on the back as well. Not quite as much, but it'll be fine. I'm um, going to round these corners as well. So I'll just do that. And this side. And this side. And then I'll just give it a little, little touch of the Distress Ink. Okay, so that's our basic um, little booklet done. So now we can just add some pockets and things to that. So, what did I have in mind? Well, let's start with the mats, shall we? Okay, so I thought I would have that guy there, so I need to I need to put some rounded corners on that and stick that mat down. So these are the mats for the B1 piece. And I have cut four of these page mats out because we have two pages, but front and back. So we need those. I'll pop that there and there. Like so. Cute. It's so cute. <laughs> and then I might put the other stripy one on this side, like so. So I will round those corners as well and pop a little distress ink on there of course you don't have to ink them at all I just think that with the craft um, cardstock the ink looks nice but my favorite <laughs> is to use black cardstock that doesn't need any inking but I know it's not fabulous on camera so we will go with this okay so that's that mat and then in the middle I'm going to use these two so I cut these out and um, one of these pages is going to be my it's going to have a belly band on here so these might be nice on there if I put a belly band on that page and then this page, I'm going to put some little pockets down below. So the fact that that little little bit of flower chopped off there is there doesn't matter. All right, so let's do that. It's done now. Oh. And so we'll just put our mats on. live in an area where planes usually go overhead so that's interesting 
It's a plane too, not a helicopter. We get a lot of, a lot of helicopters um, because I live near the freeway and uh, the rescue helicopter generally goes up and down the freeway if it needs to go down south of me to pick anybody up. So that's that page there. Right, so we've matted all of those and um, matted the back. So on this page, I'm going to put this slot pocket here, this B4 slot pocket. So I have already cut that one out as well. Let me find it. A little stash here. And this one comes with a mat that you can, you know, you can mat this piece as well if you want to. But I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to leave it just like that. Maybe I can put a little bit of decoration down here or embellishment or something. I don't know. But I kind of liked it just out of the craft. So all I'm going to do is run some glue around the edges. And the bottom edge and then I'm going to place it probably lower down on the page so that we can put tall things in there so maybe about there and like that right so that's a great spot for putting in um, store cards or business cards um, receipts oh I've got sticky bits there okay so um, this one here this piece C3 is the size the exact size of a credit card or a store card um, I think maybe um, standard business cards are that size so that's this one here so you can cut some of those out yourself so C3 is the piece of cardstock and then the mat is the pink piece here that I've just matted on top so these will fit in here nicely and you can get a few in uh, and the third one maybe I think that the top one is definitely too long for that you'd probably lose it but you can certainly put something else in there so that's my little slot pocket I've got this pocket here I was going to put a little pocket down the bottom here so that is the C2 pocket where is that guy that's one of these here this little tiny guy here is the C2 so this will fit also one of these standing up the way like so I need to just trim a little tiny bit off my um, tabs because for some reason thicker cardstock perhaps won't turn in so I'm going to put this guy down here like this so I need to definitely round that corner on there like so so let's do that and just another just another pocket I hope my lights I hope it's light enough I'll just move my lights around a bit it is stinking hot outside today but it's really overcast and humid so I'm not really enjoying it it's a good indoor day okay so that fits on there nicely Give that a little burnish like so all right lovely so on in this one on my I used that pocket as a flip and I used it at the back I actually put three pockets on here so that I could put a card in any each of those pockets like so if I wanted to this one doesn't want to go down I just there we go so you could put I don't know if you would want that third one because it's poking out the top a little bit but you could definitely put another pocket on here easily enough here you could easily put um, one more pocket here if you wanted if you wanted to have another place for store cards or business cards or anything like that so I will just leave that I will mat that one in a minute 
Okay, so that's that page, that's that page. This page, simple belly band. So where's my belly band here? So that piece is the C4 belly band. So all we need to do is put some glue on these little tabs. Like so. And stick it down. I'm even not measuring, which is really not like me. I'll just make sure that that is no, see it's not it's not straight. That's why I measure. <laughs> That'll do, I think. Alright, so I'll just put that one down there and down there. And where's where is my mats for my pockets? Here we go. Oh no, that's not them. They're here. Here's all my little pocket mats. Oh, I can't get the paper clip off. There we go. Okay, so this is my mat for the belly band. Do I want it that way? Or do I want it that way? No, that way. Okay. So I just put a little bit of glue on here. And pop that on there. Like so. Pretty and pretty simple. Okay, then on here I'm going to put three pockets. These are the C6 pockets. I don't know if you can see that. These are the C6 pockets. And these pockets are wide enough. That's this guy here. These are wide enough to slip a um, store card or a gift card in this way. So that then usually the name would poke out the top. So we're going to put three of those stacked on here. I need to round the corner of this one. So I shall do that. And then it's, do I want it right at the bottom or just a little bit up from the bottom? I feel like I might want it just a smidge up from the bottom. So it is a little bit narrower than the actual page itself but I still thought that I needed that round edge just you know to make it look right and I might stick it um, right at the edge where the where the mat is. That's that's what I'm going to do. So I just put some glue on all these tabs and pop this little guy down here and lining up with the bottom of the mat and then sort of centering it I guess like so so of course you could do whatever you wanted on the page you could do a whole page of um, just these little pockets uh, or you know you could do the whole book of just these little pockets and it would just be for store cards which I think is a pretty good idea in fact I did do a little dry run of that here's, here's one I've made before so this is just all of these pockets so I could pop this in my handbag and just put all of those store cards and rewards cards and things in there if I wanted to so you, you could do that through this whole um, this whole book you know you don't have to you don't have to put the pockets in the same place as I do or the belly bands you don't have to do you don't have you don't have to do anything you don't want to <laughs> um, and it's completely up to you you have options I just think those would be super little gifts um, or little craft fair things so because, you know, once you set this up as a project once with your cutting machine, I've just got a bit of glue on my finger, then you can just get it to ramble off as many as you like while you put them together. And if you went the way I did with this other one and did the cardstock, you don't even have to mat, so it just makes it super quick. Super quick. Okay, so that's, and then one more. I feel like it's getting a bit wonky as it's going up the way, but it might be too late now to fix that. Oh well. 
No, I don't think anybody would be able to tell. Last pocket. So the reason I only do three is because you don't really want them poking out the top of your little booklet. But again, that's up to you. Well, you can't fit another one on there anyway, can you? But you could just do two if you wanted to. Okay. And I have made these so that the tabs are glued down so that I can pop a card in any one of these just like so and it won't fall down but if you don't glue the bottom tab down then it could be a long pocket if you catch my drift okay so there's my three little it's my three little pockets and I have got some mats for those so now these should line up somehow okay so they go like that oh I think that's right okay so I'm just going to round this bottom one on one corner because I did that here and then we can just stick those on. I should put some more glue in my bottle because I keep having to squeeze it a bit more. Okay. What happens if I just leave it sitting like that? Will it gush out everywhere? Okay, so there's one mat. And then the next one. Goes that way. Like so. Probably could have done putting a bit more glue just there. And then the top one. And that's what we're doing for that page and then this one here I'm just going to put a corner pocket in there nice and simple so I have these corner pockets and that is this one here C5 so if you want them to go so in the file they come this way if you want them to sit on this side then you just need to flip it over um, on, in your um, on your canvas you know before you cut it out you just need to flip it over okay so so I'm going to cut, I'm going to put one of these guys here like so. So let's do that. Like so. My air conditioner is really rattling along. I think it's because I don't have any doors open. I need to go and open the front door. So let's make sure that that folds over, and it does. And then we can put a mat on that. Here's a mat that I've prepared earlier. That's the wonderful thing about SVGs. One of the wonderful things about SVGs. I don't have to measure anything. I can do sort of more intricate cuts. You can mass produce, and one of the best things ever, you can size it up or down. So for instance, with this um, corner pocket, you might want to stack another corner pocket underneath this little one, but make it a bit bigger so then you have two corner pockets and you could easily just resize this, just make sure you resize the mat as well so that you had a bigger corner pocket under there. Another thing you could do. Okay, so we need to put the mat down in the middle bit here. So I had a choice of mats because I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go with that. So I think we're going to go with this one. Right, so I'll just put a bit of glue on there. You can go to the side, we don't need you. Oops. Put a little bit of glue on here. And try and pick it up. There we go. And pop that mat down there. Try to line 
line it up like so. Make sure it's in the middle. Lovely. Doesn't a, doesn't a matte finish things off? Okay. Then we should just go back and pop that guy on there as well. So I have a map for that one. I just need to round a corner. Put a little tiny bit of ink on there. And then pop this here. And pop that one down on there. I mean, you don't have to put this pocket here at all if you didn't want to, this little dinky pocket. Completely up to you. Okay, right. So then the next thing we're gonna do is on this back, I'm going to put um, an accordion envelope. So let's just pop that to the side for a minute. I've got things everywhere. Let's move that over and get out our pieces for our accordion envelope. So, this piece here is the C1 accordion envelope. So I have cut out one of those. That's this guy here. Looks like, looks like that. And then for the mats, I've cut out two of this one here. So that's the, um, that's going to be this um, opening and closing section. So we want it to be, we want to have it matted on both sides. So I've, um, I've cut out two of those. I've cut out the mat for the middle, just one to put on the inside, so it looks nice on the inside. And then I've only cut out one C, um, one of these mats here, which is this bit here. Okay, so that is the accordion envelope. Let's pop that to the side. So let's go ahead and put the mat down in the middle. So that's one of um, two of the closures. This is the one for the middle. I'm going to pop it in there like so. So all I've done with this piece um, for this accordion envelope, as you can see, is um, I've just inked around all of the bits that, that you'll see and just accordion folded those little folds, but I'll show you that. Okay, so this guy is going to go in here like so. Uh, where's that? going to go like that. Looks good. Just like that. Okay. Then um, these pieces here, I have accordion folded those. So we've um, folded this one on top of this one, on top of this one, on top of this one, just giving them a flat, flattened them out. And I've done that on both sides. And then we have four little score lines here, which I've folded and then I just inked. And we have four little score lines there that I've folded and inked. And I've inked that one on the inside as well because we'll see that. Okay, so then to put this together, we're just gonna fold these all up with that tab here. And the same with this guy here. And then I'm just gonna put some glue on these tabs that one and that one and then we're just going to fold this over and I'm going to line up the bottom of this tab with the with the top section or the, the last score line here so I hope I'm making sense so I'm going to fold this over and line up this section here with that with the um, score line or just above that last score line like so and with the edge of my envelope so it looks like that can you see that I've got this little little bit here this little gusset here I'm just going to squeeze that down and then we're going to do exactly the same on this side and wrestle that back in line up with that score line and press it down Make sure it's lined up where I want it to be. And on the edge, which is not mm, pretty good. 
I'll just squeeze that down. I might even just put a couple of bull whoops. <laughs> I might put a couple of bulldog clips to hold that down for a second while the glue holds. And while we're doing that, then the next step is I'm going to use a magnet to close this. Um, so that you don't need to use magnets, but um, I thought it would be easier, you know, to stuff things into if you didn't have to worry about other kinds of closures. So I've got these little magnets, teensy ones. I got them off AliExpress and um, I didn't mean to get such small ones, it has to be said. I need a bit of scrap paper. A bit of scrap paper. Oh, let's just use a mat for now, shall we? Here, we'll use this one. Okay. So, I'm thinking I want to put the mat so that even if it was stuffed full, like this, it would be able to close up. So, I'm going to fold it down to that last score line. So, we've got all these ones at the back. And then I will grab a pencil and I'm just going to mark where that goes to, right. And then we just need to glue a magnet on here. Make it a little bit above there, okay. I'm going to pop this on here, about there. Give it a squash. In fact, let's stick the mat on there now so that it holds it into place. So then I've got this mat here, I believe. I think I want it to go that way. So I'll just put a bit of glue on this mat and we'll stick it down straight away so that, it, that magnet doesn't run away. Okay, so then I'm going to pop that on here. I'll just line it up like so. Squash it down. Make sure it's stuck around that magnet. And I don't know if I've got enough glue there. Let's get my long glue thing for these sorts of jobs. I've got this little needle nose glue so I can just slide it under there. Is any glue coming out? Yes. I'm just going to slide that under there, put a bit of glue in there, wipe off that bit, make sure it's stuck down. Brilliant! So I love this guy here for lots of things but it's also really good for getting into like this corner here where I feel like that mat didn't stick down very well. I can just put a little dog of glue in there with my little long neck glue bottle. Okay. Right, so then we just need to figure out where which way up that map that blah, 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 blah. <laughs> magnet goes. Let's stick a little bit under there. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a bit of glue on here. And then I'm going to bend that over and stick it down like so. That magnet's pretty close to the edge, Katie. Didn't stick very well. That's okay because I can see where I want to put it. I'll just flip you over. Try to. Does anybody else have magnet ha hassles like me? I'm sure you do. Okay. And then we have the mat for that one, which is going to go there. So let's put some glue on that. And put a little bit of glue around there just to make sure we get that magnet. And then put that guy on there. So my, my magnet is pretty close to the edge, so I might push this mat out quite close to the edge, make sure it's stuck down. Okay, let me just put the lid on this because if that tiny little hole that comes out of glues dries up, I can never get the lid back on. Okay. 
All right, so then we just flip it over like so. Is my magnet gonna work? I don't know if these magnets are strong enough. Oh, maybe just a little bit. Maybe these magnets are super weak. Because that's not doing a very good job. Might need to put some other kind of closure in there. That um, Maybe I'll have to resort to a bit of Velcro. That's a bit disappointing. I think that's because my magnets, I don't usually buy them this small. See how small these guys are? Tiny. I, I didn't mean to buy them that small because usually I get these bigger ones. But, you know, it's hard to know when you're just looking at something on a screen. Oh, I can't even get them apart. Oh, here. I usually, so there's one of the little new ones that I got. I've got some glue stuck to my finger. Sitting on top of the ones that I usually get, so I probably should have just used one of those or a couple of those. You can see the difference in size. Oh. <laughs> see? I should have got one that size, but I ended up with these tiny, tiny ones. Apparently, they don't stick much. Never mind. I'll, I'll sort that out later. We'll put this mat on here for now. Just your usual magnet drama. I mean, I could put the little sort of um, policy envelope closure on there. I just wanted to make it so that it was really easy to use. So I'll just pop this one on here. So maybe I'll just have to resort to a Velcro dot, which is also fine. Okay, so there's our little, there's our little, envelope, accordion envelope that doesn't want to close, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to stick this guy to the inside back here like this. And I'm going to only put glue around these three sides here so that we can also slide something in behind this guy if we want to. That's going to just annoy me so much that that didn't stick. Anyway, I'll fix it later. So I'm just putting glue along these three sides here. And then I'm going to pop it on here. I'm just going to flip it around so I can sort of roughly see where it is and line it up. Like so. Maybe not quite as straight as I had in mind. No, that looks alright. I'll just give it a press and I might need my long bone fold. I'm just going to press that long bit of glue that we stuck down that long edge like so. Should I get a bit of velcro? Where are my velcro dots? Are they nearby? I don't think they are. Mm. Never mind. We'll, we'll persevere. Okay. So that's what we're going to have on the inside. So then you can open up that and you can shove in receipts or anything that you want in there. Okay, so that's all of that done. So now we're just going to make a couple inserts. So for this next section, we probably need to map the outsides. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have some mats for the outside. I've got these guys here. Mm, that feels like it's upside down. I feel like I want that one on that side. And then I have one for the middle as well. It goes like that. But then this one seems to want to go like that. So I just flip them all around like so. There we go. So I just need to round my corners and then I'm going to glue all of these guys down. 
Okay, so while I was gone, I just matted the um, outside of our um, little organizer. So I just um, matted the cover. And I also um, dug out some um, Velcro dots. These are a bit bigger than what I like to use, but this is all they had in, in store. And I got these, if you're in Australia, from Officeworks. And so I've just popped one of those on my little on my little accordion envelope at the back so that it sticks down a bit better now okay so that is that guy done for now we are going to come back well let's let's just pop some holes in here so um, I have cut out this piece here this B2 piece and this is just a guide it's just this little slither, sliver <laughs> with some holes in it um, it's just a guide for putting in the um, eyelets if that's what you want to do so um, let's so all we need to do is put this in the middle so we're right in the middle of the book and I'm just going to pop that on here and line it up make sure it's lined up at the top and the bottom and in the middle and then I'm just going to put some little holes in here I'm just going to draw them like so and then we don't need that guy anymore that's just our little guide and that's where I'm going to put my holes in for my eyelets and then set my eyelets there so um, because I I have a crocodile so I can reach this one and this one but I can't reach the middle one with my crocodile so I use this old-fashioned little gadget here <laughs> it came with my eyelets right so you just um, put that where you want to put the hole in it and then bang it with a hammer and then this little guy here is um, for setting it so you pop the eyelet in here the top and the bottom and then you put this on top and then you smash it down and it sets the eyelets so I won't do that on camera but that's but I will go off and do that in a minute so that's that bit so far so let's just pop that to the side um, I have a couple of little inserts I want to put in here. So I have got two of these B3s. Let's just start with this one here. It's one B3. Um, so it's just a, like a booklet. And I'm going to round my corners. So I'll just do... Um, it have been a bit um, easier to do than one at a time. I'm just going to round those corners on that one. And I'll put a little bit of ink on there. All the way around, like so, and then um, we can mat this guy here. So I've already cut my mats out for the B3, and I've cut four out: two for the inside and two for the outside. Okay, so but I've got all of my mats here at the moment. So I'm thinking. These two will be for that one, and uh, this might be the inside. What else do we have? Uh, these two. Right, let's. If I put this on here, like so, that might be nice. So let's. What do I want it that way? Hmm, I think I want it that way. Alright, so let's put some corners on there. And on the inside, I'm either going to use the stripes or the dots. I'll go the stripes, okay? So I just need to round those for that one and for this one. So they're going to go like so. And then on the back cover of our little folder, I'll put this one. And go that way yeah we'll go that way I've got a little tiny bit of um of um, a chopped off flower but I can live with that so just do those little corners and then I can glue all of those on there so I'll just quickly do that okay so I just nipped off and finished um, putting the mats on our little folder so all that we need to do on this little folder now is put some little pockets on there 
so I have a couple of the corner pockets the corner pockets are C5 so I've cut one going one way and one going the other way like so and I'm just going to pop those down the bottom of my little folder so that it has um, we have an, a little insert super easy little insert that oh I, <laughs> I can't do it um, has got little pockets oh my goodness that was so difficult <laughs> so I'm just rounding these corners because I'm going to put them on these corners here which are already rounded it's because I've just put some cream on my hands so it's kind of slipping out from underneath oops so everything's slippy <laughs> it's also really humid so my hands are kind of sticky anyway Okay, well, while we're at it, we may as well round the corners of these um, little mats as well. And this one. Okay, just put a little bit of ink on those. And we could probably, let's just stick the mats on straight away, shall we? Just put a little bit of glue on my mat on my corner pocket and the same with this guy I feel a little fumbly I need to go and have some lunch let's just finish this first shall we okay so pop that on here like so maybe a little bit straighter all right, I need to stick it down. I don't want to stick my sticky fingers on there too much. And then we'll just fold these tabs in. Put some glue on those. And pop it down on here. One on this side. Give it a burnish, one on this side. And put it down on here. Give it a burnish. Whoops. Last minute wobble. And let's just make sure they're not sticking out. Okay, so then we just have a little file folder that we can put inside our little book. So that's that one. Let's pop that to the side. So I, I'm also making a little notebook. So I have cut out another one of these B3s and I have gone ahead and put the mats on the inside and the outside and rounded the corners. So that's this guy here. Then I have just cut down some copy paper to fit and I've also rounded the corners of that. So this is five sheets of paper that I've cut into halves and then folded it into half again. So it's, there's quite a bit of writing space there and I'm just going to sew this in with, the, with a pamphlet stitch. So I'll just open this up to the middle. I don't know if you want to see me do a pamphlet stitch um, I'll just do it quickly hopefully <laughs> and I'm just going to find the middle and stick a put a little uh, dot there it's pretty much the middle I'm going to come up two centimeters from that side and two centimeters from that side I might um, I'll get my my all and I'm just going to clip it all together for a second. Okay, and then I'm just going to, I'm just going to stick a hole in there. Stick a hole in here. And here. Of course, you could staple this if you wanted to. Um, I have not figured out how to accurately staple through um, multiple bits of paper without it going off. So
So I'm just sticking with um, the old needle and thread. So this is some embroidery floss and I want my um, ends to be in the middle. So uh, on the inside, so I'm going to start on the inside with the middle hole and just pull my um, thread through and I'll just stick my thumb on there so it doesn't go any further and then I'm going to go up through the top one in, so from the outside in I'm going to try and then all the way down to the bottom one from the inside out like so and then I'm going to come from the outside in through the middle and try can't see it even with glasses on there we go and then I'm going to try and come up on a on the different side of the of the long piece that we've got going down here so I'm going to come down like that and then through and that's it easy peasy then I'm just going to pull it and I've still got my tail stuck through there and then we'll just tie it off I use the good old granny knot I don't know <laughs> I know people do left over right and right over left I get confused I think a double granny works and then we'll just trim this off and there's our little booklet all done Cute. I like this this creamy coloured copy paper. I think it looks sweet. Of course, if you were doing this in a sort of a junk journal style, then you could have put some, you know, book pages and music pages and that sort of thing in there. But I am just sticking with the um, copy paper. So we've got these two inserts. We've got one more insert to do, and that is this A2 um, envelope here. Now I've provided you with the mats for that if you wanted to make it out of cardstock and then mat it with mats but what I've actually done is just printed it onto copy paper um, on both sides and then oops, then it's um, quite thin. So here's one that I've already made, it just looks like that, it's quite, you know, it's, it's not too thick, it's not too bulky and so this is how it looks when you cut it out. So as you can see, that's what this guy looks like here. And all we need to do is fold on the folding um, score lines here and here. And then um, also fold in our little tabs and glue those together. One there and one here. And then just flip up our pocket and um, stick it down. And then we have a little, so you can decorate that or embellish that if you want. You can put a closure on it if you'd like. Um, and I got two of these out of one sheet of A4 paper. So um, I've got a couple of little envelopes. So now we can put it all together. So when I was off matting these guys here, I also went ahead and put my eyelets in here. I didn't do too bad a job, but you wouldn't have wanted to see me do it. So... There you can see that's those those guys in the middle. So it's up to you whether you want to put the eyelets in. You might just want to leave it like that. Um, you might not want to put the middle one in. It you know it's completely up to you. Um, so but what I'm going to do is use a piece of elastic in the middle um, for my closure. And I've already gone ahead and made this little bead dangle. So I'm not sure, this is one of those, it's, I don't know what they're called, it's one of those beads that slides onto something like that, um, I don't know what they're called, but that's what I'm going to use, um, that's going to be my only embellishment I think, because this is going in, hopefully in someone's handbag. So I'm just going to trim, I'm just going to trim these two off a little touch because they're a bit frayed. And I'm going to poke one of these in here and then I'm going to put this on there and then I'm going to try and poke the other one in here which could be tricky because this is thicker than I 
realised. So let me just see if I can poke this one in too. Poke it in there. I thought this would be um, thin enough to go through, but maybe it's not. Ugh. I'm trying to pull it down so I can shove this one in. There we go. We're through. We're through. Okay, so then I'm going to bring those two together and I'm going to figure out how much I need. So this doesn't come through again. Let's put my little bulldog clip on there. And then I can pull this out and over. And I think that's pretty good. Maybe a, a little bit looser, so a little bit tighter even. So let's let's just tie a knot in it and see how we go. So I'm just going to pull it through and tie a knot. Tie a knot like so. Pull it up. Hopefully that's enough. Mm. Okay, let's give it a whirl. So, I want it to come over like so and close. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so that's how that one will sit with a little dangle on it. Cute. All right, so let me just open that up again. And I'm just going to trim all of this excess off. I'll make sure that it's really tight. And I'm just going to trim my excess bit of elastic off. I should have told you how long that was. I have no idea. Um, I measured, I just measured roughly, I just, whoops, making a mess everywhere. I just grabbed a bit of, of elastic and sort of held it against here and then wrapped it over like that and made sure that I just had a little bit of excess for not tying. And so that's about how long it was. So let's say it's about... 12 inches or 30 centimeters that's how much elastic that you would need okay that's all my little scrappy bits of elastic okay and then I'm going to now you could you could choose to use elastic here as well I'm going to use a little bit of ribbon so I'm just going to thread this ribbon through the top just because I like how pretty it looks on the outside thread this through here and then this bit through here. Come right. on, try. Come on. Like so. Close it up. I'm going to put my elastic over it. Like so. Right. And then let's pull that pretty tight and I'm going to tie it in a bow on along the outside of the spine. Whoops, I really have got the fumbles today. That one through like that. Could have been a bit tighter. Let's try again. Wobbling around all over the place. I need one more finger. <laughs> Something like that. You could fluff with that. Okay, so then that is how our little booklet, our little organizer looks with a little bow on the front. How cute is that? <laughs> okay, all right. So then on the inside, we have got, uh, you can make as many of these little guys as you like. So that's the um, C3 insert, which is the same size as a store card or a credit card or you know um, any of the, the reward cards that sort of thing so we could put one of those guys in here we can put a couple in here we can put some in here let's put this guy in here shall we so that will fit in there perfectly and there's room for three there then we have our little wallet um, file folder with the little corner pockets and I could tuck that in there maybe or I could put it in here, maybe I'll put it in here, maybe not, maybe here's the spot for it, 
like so and then the notebook I'm going to put through my um, ribbon and try there we go through my ribbon like so and then I've got some envelopes so I might need to um, loosen the way I've tied that it's a bit tight Just loosen that off a little bit. Let's just loosen that off a little bit. There we go. It's because that, of that big bulky knot there. So the one that I, the other one that I made, I used flat, um, flat elastic. Here, see this, and I think maybe that is better. That might be a better option. This um, because the knot in the middle is not so bulky. I mean, it's a little bit bulky, but it's not, not so bulky. So anyway, you experiment find what you like and then I'm going to stick an envelope in here like so I need to just um, make sure we can fit something in I've got a bit of glue in that corner there I think let's get in there with my phone there we go there we go I can put uh, an envelope in here and Oh, so cool, so cool. Let's put an envelope in here. All right, so let's maybe tie this up again. So, um, I made this little bead dangle, but um, you know, you can do anything you like or not even put a little closure on it. That's completely up to you another thing that you you know you can decide for yourself and then I'll just give this a, another tie up and we are done so you could make stacks of these I feel they'd make great um, little gifts maybe for um, co-workers or um, teacher gifts I think they'd make fabulous teacher gifts um, stocking fillers or you know just you know those people that you get gifts for and you might get them a box of chocolates or something well here's a little um, handmade personal gift which they can easily stick in their handbag or purse or just have you know um, in their office and they can um, put their receipts in here store cards gift cards reward cards um, great spots for keeping receipts in our little accordion um, envelope at the back here you can jam all sorts of things in there and also there is the um, little pocket space that we left at the back there as well so just a really simple quick little project that doesn't really take too long to do it's even quicker if you choose um, one of the routes where you don't have to mat it um, like I've done with this one here uh, so yeah so anyway I hope you enjoyed the um, little La Petite organizer it's only three files you can download them from my Etsy store and I'll put the link in the description box below um, I hope that you're staying safe wherever you are in the world and I'm um, looking forward to spending a Christmas if not with your family at least at home and having a break from 2020 I'll see you soon with another project thanks very much for your time today guys and bye for now bye